Why are you here? Simply. What does it mean to be the world's richest man? What is it to have all that power? And buying Navajo land. Valley of the gods, to be precise. Ila, can you hear me? Hello. How are you? I'm okay, and you? I'm good, doing good, I'm doing good. Okay. How are you? I'm in Poland, I'm on, on the lakes. There is a festival here. And they have a retrospective of my movies. Gdzie w Polsce? Gdzie w Polsce? Insko. Aha, super. Pan mówi po polsku, tak? Tak, tak, mówię po polsku, no. Możemy wywiad, możemy wywiad po angielsku, po, po polsku zrobić, co? Możemy po angielsku całkowicie. No to dobrze. No to jest prościej. Prościej? No to dobrze. Ale fajnie. Jak tam w Polsce wszystko, dobrze? No dobrze, na razie dobrze, nie, nie narzekam. No, to bardzo dobrze. Ale, um, wanted to jump into the film. Uh, very cool okay. stuff, very imaginative, very artistic, and the visuals. You, you did cinematography on it too. Uh, the yeah. first thing I noticed is the, the visuals of it. Where did you film these locations? And um, how did you just come up with the concept for the, for the look of the film? Well, basically all this, uh, uh, let's say, Zanadu, the castle of the rich guy, of the zillionaire, uh, uh, that is all actually welded together from the interiors from Polish castles. Ah. So all these castles are on the, in the south of Poland in a district called Silesia and all the castles, the interiors of the castles, I somehow managed to put one amalgamam of the interiors to build the, the abode of the richest guy in the world, mm -hmm. the zillionaire West Tauros. So that's how I build it. So I know these castles, I know the angles, I know how to put it together. Also, we use some of the special effects, of course, and uh, that uh, produced the castle of John Malkovich. Mm -hmm. As far as the <clears throat> American landscapes, you know, this is all out there. It looked to me like Utah, Arizona, uh, those kind of, they have specific kind of rocks and, and um, mountains out exactly. there. Exactly, exactly. It's basically four corners. It's also Monument Valley. Mm. The innermost part of the Monument Valley is Valley of the Gods, of course, and we use some landscapes also from the bridges, from the park, uh, the National Park, the bridges. So all this made it, uh, well, into this Navajo country landscape. Mm -hmm. So the Valley of Gods is a real place. It's not made up or anything like that. It exists. Yes, it, it is. It is uh, a real place and somewhat it's a holy place for Navajo Indians. Uh, I uh, see that there is a very strong anthropomorphical uh, feeling about this valley. There are shapes mm -hmm. uh, that are like humans. They're like busts of the uh, chiefs, Indian chiefs, and you you have also like horse riders that look like a, a group of uh, uh, Navajo riders. You have an eagle flying off the cliff of the rock. Uh, you have various animals there, but mostly it's like monumental busts of humans. And uh, they call it their holy land and the Valley of the Gods. It's, 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 they gave this name to the valley. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is that this is uh, the bottom of the old ocean. Uh, it's it's uh, 5,000 feet high, but it's the bottom of the ocean. Who would have known? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. 
Tell me your kind of your interest in the Navajo and Native Americans. How did that come about? Because I know growing up in Poland, I grew up in Poland too. Uh, you don't hear much about Native Americans. It's kind of like a foreign concept in a sense. You, you know, in America, you're more exposed to it because there are obviously the tribes here. But how did you kind of come about the, the history and learn about them to really kind of include the movie around the Navajo concept? Well, mm. You know, the, the, the space was first. I was looking for my different movie. Actually, I, I discovered this space in 1989. And oh, wow. uh, I, was, I was toured around. The, I was looking for a landscape with a location scout who specializes in uh, Western deserts. Mm -hmm. And uh, he showed me that place and it stuck with me. I was looking then for the landscape for my movie, Gospel According to Harry, which was a debut of Viggo Mortensen. Mm -hmm. So uh, ultimately I found a desert of, of all the abstract things in Poland. There, is the, there are the dunes, because I was looking for a place, I mean, the story goes in that film, Gospel According to Harry, that the Pacific has dried up and people are living in the sand dunes. So I was looking for a landscape which doesn't have anything, any sign of life. And all these Western deserts had the sign of life. Either it was like a tumbling weed or Joshua trees or cactuses or, mm -hmm. uh, there were like elements of life or Rocky mountains in the distance. Uh, There's always like life. And uh, funnily enough, the dunes in Poland, between a lake and the seashore of Baltic Sea, mm -hmm. there's a national park, which is a dunes national park in Poland. So we shot it there. But the Valley of the Gods stuck with me. And in 2011, I was invited with the meal and the cross to, to Sundance. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go through the... I, I landed in Las Vegas and took a car and I said, I'm going back. I have to see one small Valley of the Gods. And I drove through Valley of the Gods. It was January, snowing, mm. but uh, very different look of the valley. Uh, and the valley called me to, to the duty. I mean, said, Lech, you have to do a movie here. So I listened to these voices and I decided, okay, I'm coming back. With the with the camera crew and with the actors and uh, yes, I'm ready. And was then I wrote the screenplay and we started to work on this movie in 2014. Uh -huh. Was it difficult to shoot at those locations? I mean, because it's so much desert, so much open area, but also with the rocks and the landscapes and the temperature too. In the summer, I can't imagine it, it's just boiling hot out there. Um, was there any difficulties to shooting those locations? Absolutely. I mean, the heat was intense. Mm -hmm. uh, we were basically downing all sorts of bottles of water. Uh, we were like on a chain, chain drinking. I mean, this, <laughs> this bottle, the small bottles were like, almost like, a, you know, the transmission belts like given to us constantly. And the funny thing, nobody was peeing and nobody was sweating. <laughs> because it, it was evaporating. Yeah. yeah. It's coming out of you, I don't know where and how, <laughs> but it sort of evaporates from you in a second. It's you that dry drink. heat too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very dry heat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you go into a Hogan uh, and you, you talk with the Navajo people and the most important... Uh, furniture in their hogans, in their houses, is a container with water. Wow. So you come to a hogan and you sit on possibly container of water, you eat off the table, which is a container for water. Hmm. This is their gold. Well, they know, they know how to do it because living there, I could imagine that'd be part of it. I just drove down there a few times past I go into LA from Chicago and man, those are some, you know, in the summer, you, you better hope that air conditioning works in your car uh, in that way. You know, the thing I wanted to, 
I love Josh Hart. I think he's one of the finest actors we've had. And, you know, he stepped away from the industry for a long time. And, and now he's back again. And in the last few years, he's doing great films. Tell me what, what made you want to bring him on board? Because I love him in this role. And I'm just so glad to see him back doing movies because he's such a fine actor. Uh, tell me about Josh Hart and its involvement and how did he become part of this project? Uh, Josh uh, was always my... Uh number one choice for the role. So I wanted very much to work with Josh uh, because I like the the aspect of his look that he looks a little bit like has a drop of blood of indigenous people. Like he looks a little bit like uh, Navajo or he, he could have a droplet of that blood in him. Mm -hmm. in his, uh, the, I read it in his face, and I thought, if someone, uh, if, if a white person is going to write about uh, the indigenous people, I, 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 I would, I see this as a, as somebody who has some connection. And Josh was a natural choice. Also, it turned out that Josh was growing up on Basquiat mm -hmm. he, in Minnesota. Well, yes, but he loved the, the movie Basquiat and he decided, uh, after seeing this, watching this movie, he decided to pursue his film career because he started with acting and from what I hear right now, Josh is ready to direct or he already directed something. He's writing screenplays, so this is his future, I believe. Yeah, no, I mean, he not only is a great expressive actor, but he's a talented all around, you know, to, to do he what I liked, he's always chosen interesting films, not not just being a, a major superstar. He always did a, a lot of artistic projects. So I could see him being a director. That's that's interesting. You mentioned that uh, aspect of it. You know, I wanted to also go back when, when you because your films are very this one especially stylistic and stuff in so many aspects visually. How do you make when you're writing a movie, how do you foresee all these visuals uh, when you're writing it, you know, the script putting together? Do you kind of see this in advance or do you need to go on location to visualize it? How does basically pen to paper turn into what we see on a screen, especially visually? Both. Mm -hmm. I envisage, uh, you know, my screenplays are unusual because they look like uh, graphic novels. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read the screenplay and there are all sorts of illustrations going on. So on the, if you would see, I mean, this is also a, a great direction for future work of the uh, uh, visual effects people, because they need some sort of a cue, a look that they are going to pursue in terms of when we're shooting the green screen and they need to envisage what ultimately will it look like? So what type of background we will put there and what, what sort of uh, image it has to create. So uh, basically, you know, my screenplay is half words, half drawings. Mm -hmm. And those drawings are pretty much advanced. So this is not like a basic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, situation plans or something like that. They try to cover the mood also of the image. So they look like, uh, well, they are elaborate. Let's mm -hmm. let me put it this way. And uh, that's one aspect of this. And then I always go and see the natural locations and they talk to me. I mean, uh, I am, I started my movie career as a painter and a poet. So these are my two basic roots that I am grounded into filmmaking. And uh, so therefore I see everything. Mm -hmm. Hence I am the DP as well, because it's my vision. Also, you wouldn't be able on the budget that I operate with, you wouldn't be able to conceive the movie without seeing it. Uh, uh, beforehand, because it's it's uh, you have to count every penny and every buck. You know, you you've got yep. to know what you're doing, where you're going. Um, there is no room for uh, trying uh, many things and wiggling about and sort of trying. So it's 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 a combination, you know, of uh, seeing but yet 
you have to be open to what is reality offering you. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, I'll tell you about the scene in the Mill and the Cross. Uh, on one day we were really working very hard in that movie and uh, we had short nights, the crew, and in the morning one day our line producer woke us up and said, listen, today we're not shooting because we have a very thick fog and you cannot see your hand if you stretch it out. Wow. It's really, it's a good news for the entire crew because we're going to sleep longer and relax no shooting today and everybody was happy and i said no 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 we have to go and shoot and everybody said are you crazy we're going to shoot no 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 but i i prevailed of course as a producer and director and i said mm -hmm. come to the set and we went to the set actually it was very funny because we couldn't see the road and it was like you know driving in a milk in a bottle of milk but we came to the set we managed to, to get there and we took down the uh, tripod and put the red camera on top of it mm -hmm. and suddenly I'm hearing this uh, uh, steps, horse steps and I see the bunch of horses coming out of the fog with the extras dressed as this red uh, uh, soldiers uh, which are in the film and it was such a a beautiful scene and they are come they were coming from the fog shot through by the light from behind which was the light of a sunrise uh -huh. and uh, and it made a, a a wonderful scene in the movie which was a gift of god i mean and i remember one i think it was at sundance that somebody asked me how did you do this fog effect for these <laughs> soldiers? And I said, well, we got a very good uh, special effects guy from Australia. And we spent a lot of money on, on smoking the entire field. So. <laughs> wow, that's unbelievable. But you know, that's that sense of a director and filmmaker that you kind of sometimes go with your gut instinct in that. What well, you have to film, you have to take what is given to you. Right. I mean, I know that there are a number of directors who are waiting for a cloud or waiting for this, waiting to, for that. And uh, I am of the opposite school. I, I, I acknowledge the fact that I am not doing my film alone. There are powers above who are on the set as well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> control the weather especially. Yep. Uh, yeah. For example, in the Milan, the, in the Valley of the Gods, we have a scene when suddenly there is this downpour through the hole. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this, this opening, this hole, which for me looks very uh, like uterus, like uh, uh, the hole that the bears, the, the gives the bears. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the older guy is climbing up there and you see that hole in uh, in the top of the uh, mountain mm -hmm. and you know we were shooting down there and suddenly there was a very unusual downpour going on wow. and everybody was hiding the camera i said no let's go and shoot it and we shot it and i found a place for this in the movie so suddenly in this dry land if they you have this incredible downpour and this is associated with the cry of the baby newborn baby actually the the baby that in the final scenes becomes mm -hmm. uh, avenger becomes an avenger unbelievable how, how nature dictates you know certain things to happen and and credit to you for going with it I wanted to ask you about polish cinema i think i grew up in poland in um in the 90s uh, and there's always a, a sense of artistry in the, in, in, the, in the country, art and poetry, like you mentioned, and theater, but never have I seen now, being kind of involved in the industry now, that Poland is finally being recognized around the world for the films. I mean, we had two Oscar nominated in Cold War and, and Boże Ciała. Um, I spoke to Jan Komasa actually, when that was going around the Oscars time, and it's just, 
really finally people are noticing the Polish filmmakers and the actors and talent. What do you think changed in like the last 10 years in Poland that the world is finally kind of seeing that great filmmakers come out of her, great actors, and even Poland as a country is such a great place to film stuff because you, you know, Mamy Góry and Morze, you know, that, that whole aspect of it, um, it, it it's just cinematically a great country to shoot in because you have so many different landscapes. Have you noticed anything? And look at the interiors that they managed right. to put together. And the castle. There's a castle, castle. The, there's a Zanadu of, of, of a modern citizen came. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, the castles. I mean, the country just lends itself to, to a, a, a look in cinema that's very presentable. What do you think changed uh, the, the world star recognizing the talent and, and the Poland films are, and the industry, the film industry is finally coming and really rising and being noticed? I have no idea. I mean, things are happening sometimes and you don't know why and you don't know when, but suddenly things are starting to happen. I mean, the same was with the Chinese cinema that suddenly was discovered by the world, Korean cinema, now is the K-pop suddenly very popular. And you had a moment that the Romanian cinema was very important. And there was a moment that Iranian first, the films were winning basically everything that moves. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I never look at it this way. Uh, I know that certain uh, film festivals, directors, they're looking for, uh, uh, for their input into the world stage and they try to discover like Marco Miller has discovered the Chinese cinema for Venice. And uh, like the, the, the film director, the fi film festival directors who want to, to create a wave from a, from a certain country. So maybe it's the time to create a wave from Poland. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I remember, like, maybe 10 years ago, Prague became, like, a big location. People discovered Prague, Hollywood kind of discovered, and everyone started shooting there, and the Born, uh, you know, identity movies. I just think that if they discover Poland, there's so many places you can really uh, shoot and have, you know, phenomenal scenes and just settings. I I'm just hoping that... Uh, you know, big actors and big name actors are willing to come to Poland and film and shoot. And it becomes kind of a place where, where a lot of films can make and help the industry and the country. Yes, pretty much so. However, I don't know how come suddenly this is the case. But yes, if one can feel that there is the moment, the Polish moment, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, it looks like we have to finish. Yeah, we're out of time. I was just going to say that. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Really appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the film. Very, very visually appealing and just interesting all around to see. Uh, looking forward to your next, uh, you have a pretty project, some of the Polish movie coming out too, right? Uh, yeah. Looking forward yeah, to it's it. Coming up. It's coming up. I'll, I'll be looking forward to it. Thank you for okay. your time. Pozdrowienia, wszystkiego najlepszego, Lech. Uh, hopefully we get to talk again. Wszystkiego. Do widzenia. Do widzenia.